back to my channel. It's a bit noisy in here because I've actually got the uh, air con running at the moment because outside it's um, pretty much very hot. Uh, 29 degrees uh, has been up to 30 before. So the main issues here um, is temperature in the shed. I've got my servers running as you can see down on the floor here. I've got raised them up off the plinth so air circulates under the servers because that's where the power supply sucks air. We've got uh, radiators now installed on the CPUs, which um, blows out the side. So there's a gap between spaces between the servers, which is fantastic. I don't have CPU issues. Hard drives run hot. Uh, so the liquid cooling works perfect on the CPUs, keeps it really low temperature, even with conditions like this. I don't, I don't have an issue with the CPU size. Issues is on the hard drives. Hi, Mike. But we've got fans in the front, but I don't think they're blowing hard, blowing hard enough. And so we've got the aircon unit in here that cools them down. So we are cooling them at 30 degrees, well, 30 degrees running on the hard drives on there. They are NAS drives now, so they are designed to run hotter than they've been designed for that as well. And they obviously got warranty and things like that on the side of it. But A, I like to keep this shed cool, not just for the service sake of it all. And don't forget we're running also, running some very old Dell servers here, which eat a lot of power as well as um, produce a lot of heat. They produce a lot more heat than these boxes down here. They're more modernized. This is old tech. <laughs> so uh, that's that's my um, some of the issues as well. But hopefully in the next week or so, those will come offline. I'm slowly gradually getting the data off, moving the services over and, and converting it to VM which is on the new boxes, which is quite nice. But um, now the aircon unit is running. It's running about 900 watts. So that equates to about four pounds per day on, elect on electricity. And because the temperature has been really, really high this week, um, I've been more or less running this every single day from like seven in the morning to about probably about nine o'clock in the evening when it starts cooling down outside and you can see how much sun is out there when you've got this glow going on here on the door frame bit um, and I have run this overnight as well overnight it consumes more more electricity more electricity so it's quite hungry even if this is a basic aircon unit from B&Q which is not really designed to run 24-7 have two of these units but I've also decided to install a little power con little con um, monitor here we go. So we can see the draw that the um, aircon is using, and also you can see over the last few days how much money that's actually cost. So don't take that completely serious. The thirty-four pounds over the last three or four days, because uh, I don't think I got the pence per unit right. So I'm trying to get hold of the electric company to say what is the kilowatt per hour charge, including the VAT and the surcharge, whatever goes on top of it. What do I need to punch into that little? gadget there to get the correct price per kilowatt then we could be more accurate with this a colleague of mine a friend of mine uh, really clever he's um took the wattage drawer and he sort of roughly gave me this machine should cost me two pounds per day if it's left if it's left on 24 7 um should roughly or four, i think it's four pound a day 24 7 but the hours i run it on should only cost me Two pounds per day, even two pounds per day can be quite adding up quite cost effectively. And the only way forward to make this more efficient in here, I mean, I like to, be, it's got to be cool in here to work in here as well, because I don't just like have my servers here, I also have my Mac for my editing for videos and stuff like that. And I like to film videos here as well. And obviously, having it too hot, it's hard work. Um, and having that blowing, it's quite bloody noisy too. So I'm hoping you're hearing me okay over the, that blowing. Um, so my way I thought, there's a lot of sun out there, it hits my roof, um, the shed is pretty good at shielding the heat coming in, it still gets warm in here because I think it's generated mostly from this lot here as well, don't help. So I'm thinking about later on when I get a bit of cash together is put solar, solar panels on the roof, buy a battery backup unit that I can take what the energy is drawn from the roof, from the solar panels, store it in the battery to use in the shed itself. So in theory, especially if we've got sun like this going, I think we've got this going on for quite about three or four weeks, maybe a, a bit more than that. And obviously each year, we're getting more and more hot weather coming through quite early as well. 
So that will pay off because I could get the everything in this shed running off the battery and when the battery drains down it'll kick over to the main main power. So that way I'll save a lot of money because the amount of heat going on at the moment here, I could be saving myself loads and loads of money. I could be running that aircon unit 24-7 without actually wor pay, worrying to paying for it from physical electricity, it could be on solar panels. The roof I've got is quite big, probably six, quite big panels up there and probably generate a lot of um, electricity off it. Or even if it just half, or even if it, it, what the shed uses, uses half what I already use, it'd be, still be a saving, massive saving on costs. But that's a big project, which I don't have the money for at the moment, but it's an another idea. So if you're building a shed, running some servers and your, your workstation, your game machine, and running like a YouTube channel, and you want to be self-contained in the shed to do that with, that's probably a way to do it. Build, get a nice big shed like I've got, with a nice bit of space on the roof, Put it in the bottom of your garden so it's in where the sun comes in the most in the garden. So where I've got in the garden here today is where mostly sun is always on the shed side. That way you can draw the energy off the solar panels, stick it in a battery that because um, on the back of the shed here behind the wall there's plenty of space to put a nice big huge battery section there so you can really charge that up. There'll be enough power. Uh, what the battery I was more considering about is the Tesla battery they use for houses that's enough to run the whole house all overnight so that would be perfect for the shed that would probably run the shed for a whole complete whole day a day and a half probably running off that and if you've got solar energy kicking in during the day it will just keep it topped up and it will be well worth doing but again you're looking at about three grand maybe for solar panels on the roof you're probably looking at five thousand pounds for the Tesla battery installed and whatever it costs to get it installed as well that's the cost of the battery, I know they're, I know they're not cheap but long term, it will pay it back quite nicely. So that way you can run, probably run everything off here, off the solar, and then have some sort of fancy switch in place uh, that will switch over to main electricity when your energy level drops and you need to recharge, you know. So that way, but at least I'll be saving lots and lots of money on running electricity on here. So that's my, that's my long term goal to do this. Now my short term goal is to replace the aircon unit, which is this box here. Now that eats over 800 watts of power. That's what it's rated, and that's what the meter is actually physically saying the electricity pulls on that. I found a new aircon unit. Doesn't have the condenser. Doesn't have the refrigeration unit in it. It blows air. That's all it does. But it's got a 50 liter tank, holds um, fridge, cool water. You can top it up with putting ice cubes into it, and it blows cold air into the room. Designed for patios, installs or running in a room as this big. It does 80, 80 square meters of space, which is more than what my shed is. So it should be efficient enough to cool this room. And it only consumes 240 watts of power, which is literally halving my bill with this box, <laughs> with that aircon unit. And the best thing about the new box, it doesn't need the outflow pipe at all. Because what it does, it sucks the air from behind and the sides of the unit draws it in so sucking the uh, hot air out cooling it down and throwing it back into the room itself and then every time uh, the water level gets a bit cooler uh, it's not as cool as it was you just keep throwing ice cubes into it and one of the unit allows you to have a, um, an ice cream tray that you can pull out and put into a fridge freeze it overnight stick it back in and away you go but the idea of that unit because it runs less power I could run it 24 7 in theory so when I leave uh, to go home and the sh I, I lock the shed up, I can throw more ice cubes into it for overnight um, cooling, and it works. It'll work a treat. It will be. So and it's only 249 quid. So it's it's budgetable. That's in my budget to do that this week. So I'm, that's what I'm thinking of doing. And that way I don't have to hold in my shed very <laughs> with a pipe going out, and it can be moved around the shed. So it doesn't have a, have to have a permanent place. And obviously, winter through the winter period, when it gets so cold, it can actually go in storage and it needs to be used for some time again. And having that tray with ice cubes, things like that, I don't have to go back to the house to get ice cubes because in here, I still have the freezer here. So I can top that up, make my own ice cubes, my own ice cube packs and stuff like that. Or if I get the one with the tray where it's got a special design one to go in the freezer, then what I can do is when I'm not using the unit overnight, it can come out, put into the freezer, freeze overnight, next morning, back in there, cooling the room off nicely. It's quite a nice one actually. So I'm looking at doing that because that's going to be my cheaper option to call this room. And it's meant to be 
a little bit more silence as well so I can start filming and doing stuff in here because um, this shed has been when it peaked uh, I think it was last week when we peaked really high temperatures here uh, that took very difficult to cool this down it's, it was still showing on the on the temperature 29 degrees and I'm still feeling sweaty um, and feeling how warm it is in here even with the aircon on it was not efficient not efficient enough for me uh, or for the shed itself here so that's my goal what to do now and also I'm looking at because now I've got a flat now I'm moving two of these I'm moving that PC up to my flat moving one of the servers up to my flat and what I'm going to do is I'm using this special sync software that allows me to sync the data off those two machines off-site. In theory it's going to be an off-site backup and obviously reducing units in here will reduce heat that's been produced by those and also it reduce the power consumption used in the shed itself so that'll be a bit more of a bonus too. Um, so yeah that's what I'm planning to do. Still plan to do the roof still <laughs> and I was filming earlier and right next to my bench just on the wall here huge spider it was probably about as, almost big as my palm came down the wall so <laughs> I had to get rid of it it's right next to me like oh my god I still got the video where I'm like talking and then suddenly I've gone like I noticed it it was like shocking actually showing the size of it huge because up the top here there's air vents for the sheds um, and it, it, they're obviously coming in from that side there and also I need to block that off because next door smokes, well, they should be smoking and the smell of it comes in here and it's disgusting, it really, really is disgusting. Um, hi Mike, what are those two servers? They look different to the ones you have shown before. What well, these two here, Let's see if replies back. So what well, these two, Mike? Well let's go over this. Um, I mean, let me turn the camera around. These two are quite old. Oh, below the next one. Okay, right. I'll, I'll run over this anyway. So these two really old servers. They're Dell PowerEdge servers. One's runs terminal service is on top remote desktops. The other one's running VMware, which has a, a SQL database. They're old. They're way over. They're about six years old now. Still going quite strong. They're power hungry. The top one takes about 0.5 amps of power. This takes about one amp of power. So they're quite hungry on the electricity side. But we're, we're virtualizing them and they're gonna go onto our new servers here. So we've got, at the end there, this box. Well, these two boxes are identical. Identical on hardware, what's inside them, and everything. They've got the same amount of disk space. The hard drives have been upgrading them to NAS hard drives now. So much more hardware and hard drives. I've got a small UPS at the top there that, that sits these two on. This third server, again, the same spec as the other box, got the exact same hardware configuration and um, deep stuff inside, technical stuff. That's going to go to my house and that will sync with these two servers here. Okay, because one runs VM stuff, the other one's more for storage. So th those will be duplicated and using a piece of software called Sync that will sync to this box over the internet. It does it by byte by byte count, so it's quite quick. Now, this box here it's not a server this is my actual PC my gaming rig it's quite um, again it runs the same motherboard as uh, my servers <laughs> got the same processor as my servers which is an AMD uh, processor running a 4 gigahertz it's got 32 gigabytes of RAM in it it's got an SSD drive 500 gigabytes and also has a 3 terabyte storage um, hard drive in there as well and it's got two gaming graphics cards inside and it's also then we've got uh, a cooling rad at the top there for the CPU and we've got some nice big huge fans at the front for the hard drives to be cooled and that's my gaming rig that's my game rig um, so that's what I play games on and I still also do my 360 stuff I've got a 360 camera and the software only runs on PC so I, that's on that box as well it's quite it's a super powerful machine it's very quick even the games I play on it don't actually take uh, all these power that's in the box and I run two GPUs in there which are quite high spec they're GeForce uh, 1080, 1050 Ti's they're quite quick for what, what it is it's, it's not top of the range a high, a high spec anyway does the job at the end of the day and it's quite cheaply as well and I've got these boxes here um, that are moving slowly which are my backup boxes so they run in additionally to the servers so backup files 
this backs up data as well. Now this one's a spare, so this spare one here will go off to my flat and that will sync with this box here. So this is like an archiving storage box. So what I don't want on my main working drive, so I still want accessible access to it when I need to go back to it, <clears throat> gets archived onto there. They've got mirror disks, uh, two 10 terabyte hard drives in those mirror disks and they run a piece of software that will synchronize between each one. Again, it'll, anything gets stored on there will also sync over here. This one will go off site. <coughs> having all the data in one place makes it a bit more well, Vera, I'm always preaching to people, don't consolidate data all on one site, have an off-site backup somewhere. How do you afford all the hardware? Well, this is um, hardware-wise, because I do a lot of filming and things like that, uh, and I also run my channel. I get a bit from Google as well, from um, the YouTube side. This is how I support these boxes, and a couple of them are, are my um, that I've had for a while that I've just literally upgraded to anyway. And it's, I don't buy things straight off I tend to buy um, bit by bit and just add to it as I, as I grow anyway and it's needed for archiving all the film stuff I do on my Osmo so I do a lot of, this is my this is my film camera that I use my go-to camera so that's my Osmo itself and the new screen I got for it as well my Sennheiser and stuff and there we go so it's quite a lot comes from sponsored um, videos uh, that I do on a completely different channel and I've got some colleagues that helps me on to do videos for them, so they pay a little towards it, and it all goes towards keeping these updated because obviously I keep all my not just stuff I film for other people, but also home life, family <coughs> pictures, all get stored on there as well. <coughs> Excuse me, it's getting dry in there. <laughs> Doesn't know with the aircon unit. And when I before I left, when I, I used to work full time IT, I was I was running my own IT company for many years, and I used to collect a lot of like memorabilia like this, um, statues, I've, in the past you've probably seen statues up around the side of a bench um, and I've got an unlimited limited edition prints like this, I mean I, 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 I brought loads of stuff when I was running my business and uh, then when I, when I moved into my mum and helping her out because I became a carer for her I started selling bits off and buying bits like this because I had access to a garage and a smaller shed so I thought while I'm looking after my mum in my spare time, I'll create channels and do some video, get something going, growing towards it. So when I get to a point where I don't need to look after my mum anymore, unfortunately she passed away uh, a couple of years ago, then I had something to go into, more creative to go into. Um, so this is what I've been doing here. YouTube is very hard to get into, it's very hard to make money from. Still fighting each each time putting videos up. And because now I've moved in another flat, most of my time is taken away <laughs> trying to get stuff up there so I can be more creative. So if I'm at home, I can be filming. If I'm at my shed, I can be filming and doing stuff. But a um, lot of stuff comes out. I do a lot of free filming for local independent businesses. I don't charge for those. So I'm working on another sort of Facebook campaign site thing I'm doing, building that up. Eventually, once that hits to the right amount of views, uh, I can then get sponsors on. We hit a couple of last year. We hit quite hard on one of the uh, Facebook groups, and we had a local council sponsor the videos on there. So that um, was quite well. Then they then after sponsoring, they pulled back to see how the channel will grow. So we need to get the channels growing, Facebook pages growing high, before we get another sponsor on board. So we sustain sustain the sponsors for a long period of time. So it's hard work, but it pays off. And if you've got loads of spare time, I mean I've got kids. Like run around myself as well so it's difficult to have a, 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 like a full time on it but if you're free and single it's plow yourself into it go for it and you'll, you'll get there what is your biggest channel jack drones is my biggest channel still growing now but there's not much content made on it because drones are very much going downhill that's um, <clears throat> it's not mega it's about it's the biggest i've got four thousand and 40 odd subscribers, uh, they all still watch videos on there. I make a tiny little bit of money because again you'll sustain, the trouble with YouTube, you've got to sustain the views on your videos on a regular basis going forward to be able to make any decent amount of money and because of all this hype on YouTube and everyone's trying to get to the top, everyone's trying to make YouTube channels, it's getting very difficult to make money uh, or get the views on there. You've got, you've got to pick a subject that's very unique. I mean, like for instance, drones no good because drones is peaked. Uh, it's now, and there was, nobody's now interested into it. So the drone channel has really sort of peaked and dropped. 
that's it, end of life. The only thing I can do is news, but not a lot of stuff really comes out in the news for drones, apart from crashing and things like that, boring. Um, but no one's made any new type drones, so that drone channel has dropped. So I've got a, now I've got into the IT channel for this one because this was, was my main skills. So I need to get off my ass and make more videos on this channel for you guys so that I can build this up. So this is equating to very half half what I got to Jack Strange. So this is about 2,000 on this channel. Now my other channels are really much play, play things I'm doing, messing around, trying new stuff. Because I want to sustain a channel that's very, <clears throat> very open to all sorts of stuff. Because then that makes it more interesting. That way there's no peaks and troughs in the industries or any industries. It very much covers the whole thing. That's what Jack's gear was designed for, uh, is to cover sort of general stuff, you know, anything that could be IT, drone related, it could be anything related really on that side. Um, so that one's a, a newbie, so it's only got 88 subscribers at the moment. It's a very newbie channel, still growing it, still doing stuff for it, but I need to get more, again, need to get off my ass, make more videos to put out there, because that's the key is create more videos. The minimum amount of videos you should be creating as a YouTuber is one per week minimum. Uh, if you're a vlogger, the vloggers go quick and they get a lot more attention because they're doing it daily. Daily, 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 daily videos. Every single day they're uploading videos. I think the only time a vlogger don't upload is probably at the weekends, but they'll probably catch up on a Monday. But no, normally daily. So when the algorithms see you're doing video daily um, you start ranking a bit more on YouTube and you get noticed a little bit more than you do but channels like this it's very difficult to do stuff daily because A it's getting stuff in B it's getting the funding to get the money in to buy stuff to do reviews with uh, it's not all singing and dancing as people think um, you do get some people send you certain products for free on um, Jack Jones it happened I had a, I think if I said like a couple months worth of um, companies send me loads of stuff, but it was all cheap crap stuff they want to send through and do reviews for. But I got it for nothing, did a review on it, got got some high views on that as well, but weren't mega, it wasn't the big bucks. Because <laughs> um, now with um, everyone's aware of vloggers, they tend to now send them all the best bits. And channels like this that are more dedicated to the industry or, or, or the, the, the bit I'm doing it around, like IT for instance, Nobody wants to know, they'd rather do it for a vlogger. So we struggle hard trying to sort of get through. So now we're using our skills to sort of uh, get videos out there. So I wanted to do a video today to sort of cover the temperatures in here. We've gone off a bit off key at the moment. But when you go live, that's what happens. People ask you questions, you go off key. But it gives you an idea now. Um, it is hard. It is hard. But uh, yeah. So that's, anyway, getting back to this video. <clears throat> um, I'm getting really dry now. <coughs> I should have brought some water out with me, but no. So, cooling, the pro cooling this room down, so that's what we're going to do. Um, seal the ceiling off, try so we can keep as much cold air, because in theory, as I'm pumping cold air in here, it is seeping out through the air vents at, at the top there. So we need to seal this off, so that stop A, the spiders getting in. <laughs> I mean, I've only seen <coughs> two big spiders in there, and that one, one today was a huge one. It was actually on that wall. There's a big spider, so um, that's the biggest I've seen in the shed. Uh, just check around while I'm on here, make sure there's no more jumping down at me. Uh, frightening things. Oh, don't like spiders. <laughs> um, but yeah, so that's what we're going to do. Still the scene off so we can keep more cold air in here than outside itself. Uh, I'm going to purchase that um, cooler unit very soon. I'm going to be saving some money towards that anyway because it's uh, a thing that I will use. Plus, I hate being outside in a really hot, hot sun. It's nice in a nice cold room and I can be more efficient when I'm more cooler. <laughs> My flat's nice because it's held up, because it's on top floor. I get a nice cool breeze going through the windows and all my walls uh, and windows are actually on the outside so I don't have any walls that have got neighbours next to it. So I fear I get a nice cold air circulation through the flat. So having two of these up there, I'll probably keep it cool anyway. I wouldn't have to worry about cooling or running air cooling up there. But here, the shed is on the central point in the garden where the sun hits first thing in the morning and all the way throughout the day. But it's perfect to have air, um, solar panels on the ceiling absorbing that heat, but again, it's expensive. Um, I'll probably have to do that in stage, buy like a couple of panels at a time, um, buy the battery later on, and then obviously get electricians to come in wire it all together and stuff. But um, unless I get some sponsors in between that time. But who knows, never know, might, might just do that. <laughs> but. We get the cooler in here first. 
see how that works out. I need to get a lot of this room a lot more tidied up. There's still a lot of crap. I've got boxes in here that need to go to my flat. <clears throat> Walls to be finished off, ceiling to be done. Um, I'm getting the cabling done really nicely. Look, I've got the started cabling at the back there. So I've got a nice, if you look right at the back there, all the cabling is really nice and tidy there. Up to the switch. There's a bit of a mess going on here. I mean, that's just temporary at the moment. When I move these boxes there, that cabling you see on the floor will go. That's to my Mac, that'll go as well. But you can see the existing cable for the servers all pinned up nicely on the back there. I've got a patch panel in there. So that brings the pub cable from the house into here. And I've got to put some cable around the, the um, shed itself and it'll be patched up in there as well. I've got a couple more little panels to go in there so it tidies the cabling up itself. But yeah, we're getting there. PDU unit there for power. It's obviously it's a surge protector as well, all quite nice. Um, so we've got plenty of room for plug sockets. So we're not overloading what we've got down there. So yeah, so it's getting it's getting there. It's taken a while to get there. Probably about a year, I think I've been here for. So we, we are getting uh, very close to getting this completed to where I want to get it to. Get it to. I was going to have this a gaming um, bench this side here. But my, I thought I'd take my game server up to my flat to get bored in the evening. So this evening, even I can still create videos, I can still edit stuff and do a lot of marketing side, trying to get my channel moving more in the right direction as well. Um, so this bench will probably do like product reviews on it once I got rid of this box server anyway. So once that's gone, I'll be selling those servers, get rid of it, and uh, give me more room. <laughs> so thanks for watching, guys. Um, keep on, if you're not a subscriber, hit that subscribe button. Remember, like and share, all that crap to go with it. <clears throat> hit that bell notification so you know if you go next time I'll come online as well and I'll get some more videos out so I need to get off my backside to make more videos for you guys which will be on networking um, cables all sorts also I, well, yeah, I've got to tell you I am going to start looking at going 10 gigabit ethernet here Asus Asus do a, gig, a 10 gigabit network card that will go in desktop PCs and, and servers like these that are 10 gigabit, they're only 88 pounds, they're not mega expensive, that's the cheapest I've seen a 10 gigabit network card for. So I'm going to be buying a few of those in first. The most expensive item to buy is a 10 gigabit switch, which I think I've got an 8 port one for about 500 pounds. So I'll be getting that, again I'll be getting it in stages, <clears throat> so we can go much faster on here. <coughs> Excuse me. I will do a video later to show the speed I've got the network running at the moment and the, the maximum I've got out of it because my Mac and my PC runs at different speeds on this network. Don't know why, but they do. My PC is faster than my Mac. How weird is that? I think it's the protocols the Mac run that slows things down. But again, we'll do a video on that to explain and talk about it and stuff as well. And we'll do some videos on these, like what consumes most power in your house with these little boxes. So once I figure out the correct pence per unit, pence per kilowatt, then we can then look at uh, what what's cost effective, what's not cost effective, what costs money to run, blah, blah, blah. And we'll do it over like an eight hour period, like a day or something, or maybe 24 hours. So you can say, when you buy that, that's gonna cost you this on this pence per, per unit. So you know sort of roughly what co things cost as well. Be interested actually, you know, the freezer. We'll fill the freezer up, we'll stick the, the unit on it, see how much that consumes on electricity per day. Things like we don't really take for granted. We'll do videos on that anyway. So thanks for watching, guys. Cheers.